after Three, the set. Two, but we're going into one, it. Luna draw. versus Lores here. Game number one. Looks like they're in it. And Luna, like we were saying, he's on the Lucian. We saw Lores do really well against Mises Lucian, but Luna's a different player. Starting this one off, of course, on Demon Island. I mean, basically exactly what we saw earlier. Even same color scheme. Not the same skin, but same map, same color scheme. Same legend. Let's see. There's the recovery. You see the sweat coming out. Laura is just completely controlling that ground. Anytime Luna wants to land, he's saying, no, sir. This is my airspace. You cannot land. Ooh, Laura is actually recovering away from the stage there, burning a lot of movement, and Luna just capitalizes, comes down with that down air. Laura's was trying to be tricky with his movement. He still had that vertical movement because of that uh, bow recovery. He just ended up throwing it away, though. Picked him up right on that corner with that spiking down air. Ooh, nice D-Sig, not going to be enough. It was two towards the center of the stage, and Lucian is no slouch in the defense department. He's not a tanky legend, but he ain't no glass cannon. Yeah, not quite sure what stance Luna's in, but usually you'll see a lot of Lucians take out of speed to put into that strength. So you get a little bit more KO consistency, but Lorez still manages to take down Luna's first stock. Now Luna's back to the Blastus. Likely wants to switch over to the Katars. That tends to be what he wants for early stocks. There's the side air. Could be setting up the edge guard. Man, Lorez, he is in your face. He is ready to go over on that wall, be completely stacked with you to pick up that bow Nair. Double Nair. Gets the neutral line into another Nair. Luna's got great damage here. He swaps over to the Katars. Gets through the D-Sig, those lingering frames. You knew the timing on it. Gets punished for that oh! side sig. But the GCD sig to get back on stage does make a connection. Gave him plenty of room to get back. The signatures are flying from Luna. Oh man, he is so eager to take this stock off, but Loras is finding punish after punish. Doesn't get anything after that side light. This time follows the movement of Luna, but still not able to get the hit as the down sig from Luna. Takes down Lorez's second stock. Over to the Katars. Just a little bit of a lead here. Lorez at the weapon disadvantage. The spawn favors Luna. He instantly grabs it, tosses the Katars away, and picks up those blasters. Next one comes in, instantly tosses it away. Back over to the Katars. Very valuable for, for <laughs> Luna at this point. Lorez able to grab the bow. There's the side air. Could be setting up the edge guard oh! here. Doesn't get through all the frames of it that time. Picks it up, and Lorez took very little damage. He's probably sitting at about 35, maybe 45. Good job from Laura's there, making sure he didn't take too much punish while Luna was playing that weapon denial game. He's doing a really good job of going for hit stun into weapon toss and then trying to steal away the weapon. But now he's the one who is unarmed on the outside as Laura's keeps the corner guard going. Different bow, throws out the down sig. Luna gets above it. Different bow, same signature. The easy corner guard option for Kaya players out there. That's why you see both Laura's and Impala going for that quite often. In the neutral oh. light. Fast falls down, more neutral lights coming out, but the down sig almost does it for Lorez. Luna, he's going to be able to get back up safely as Lorez gave him a lot of breathing room as he wanted to go pick up that spear. That's what's so crazy about Lorez's comeback oh! ability. That's enough to do it. It almost seemed like Luna was going to take it before that, right? He hit the Qatar in light, got the reset, got the second Qatar in light, but Lorez almost stole the game from him. He was able to wrestle it back towards the end. Go for that sort of reset again with the neutral light into the recovery. Luna held on and he took it. Yeah, he's, he's got to be real thankful that he's on Demon Island where the blast box uh, to the outside is a little bit wider so he's able to survive that Kaya down sig. On Small Brawl Haven, he would have been done and that would have been devastating. But great recognition from him. He got that dodge down read from Lores where he got that second neutral light, immediately goes into the recovery, doesn't try to reset, hoping to get a dodge out or anything Three, else. It's just like, two, all right, I got my opportunity, one, I got my KO. And looking at the damage spread between Lores' two weapons, like we've been talking about the spear a lot. That game, he put 311 on the bow, so primarily a bow game compared to the 148. He did more than double damage on his bow than he did on spear. Yeah, I feel like he's been taking those comments to heart a little bit. Maybe he's playing a lot of bow, but the bow's been looking solid. He's able to get damage trades with Luna, but Luna's still oh. getting more as the recovery connects. Not going to quite KO. Doesn't have much here as he's sweat beating for those chase dodge up Nair. I feel like we're seeing the Ooh. confidence of his Taros here. The fact that he was willing to go for a GC in light on Blasters, two jump heights up. I think he is so confident. He feels like he really has a read on Lores' movement and evasion tactics. Now, Luna's got to be feeling good. I mean, uh, like we said, he played against Lores at San Diego, and uh, clearly Luna has watched the tapes. He knows what to do. Gets over the down sig. Doesn't get too much of a punish there, but he's still keeping this pressure on Lores. 
Pretty sure even if that D-Sig hit, it wasn't going to KO, but now it will as he was definitely in the red at that point. Lores, maybe about 90 up to 110 damage behind Luna at this point. The weapon spawn comes in, favors Luna. He doesn't even immediately go for it, but he grabbed it after hitting that second neutral air unarmed. Nice falling stare from Luna. Trying to play the spacing game, going for those poking sidelights, a very safe tool for the Blasters players out there. Dashing around, keeping that stage control charged up. What's the punish? A down sig from Lores. Lores seemed to be a little bit slow, or maybe he was trying to figure out exactly what he wanted to do here because he did have plenty of time, but he probably also made the estimation that, like, okay, Luna's not super damaged. So if I'm fully charging his signature here, that's not really going to do too much other than add, like, a decent amount of damage. So he had to go through that risk assessment in the moment and be like, well, do I go for a combo? Do I just go for a light attack? Do I go for a fully charged signature? He ended up with a D-Sig. Yeah, I think in that moment, that would have been the most damage per single hit that he could have done is just throw out a signature there. But he still manages to lose that second stock, and now we're into the final stock of Lores here in game number two. Luna still finding hits with his Kataris. Lores cannot land. The spear just hasn't been the effective tool against Luna that it was against Ooh, other oh. competitors, virtually every other competitor in this bracket. He hasn't found the dares. He hasn't found the edge guards. He did find the D-Sig over all the way on the right side, but the lead is even bigger for Luna this time as he spawns back in. Not sure if he's in downlight recovery range for the blasters, but he's pretty close to it. Doesn't get the neutral line as Lores does that dodge back. Classic Blasters D-Light over the edge. The GC D-Light from Lores to get back on the stage. Giving him a little bit of momentum here. He did find a hit after that, but Luna, again, these hits are sending Lores flying. His stock is ticking down here, and the D-Sig is going to do it. Luna takes game two on the precipice of a 3-0 against Lores, knocking him out of the tournament and moving on to face Impala in the elimination finals. He already beat Lores today in the 2v2s. Now he's trying to do it in the 1v1s, this time with a little bit of revenge on the side. But can he do it? Is there a swap up from Lores? We talked about how Lores has pretty much been all about that Kaya. Three, it looks two, like he's still one, all about that Kaya. So looking at who sent Lores down to the elimination bracket, it was Yu's earlier in a top eight qualifier match, and Knees was the one who sent Luna down into the elimination bracket, also in a top eight qualifier match. So both of these players entered into top eight on the elimination side. Luna maybe thinking his lucky stars that Lores was the one to actually take Knees out so that he ended up having to fight Lores instead of Knees. And right now he's looking solid against him as Lores getting closer and closer to the red. Good movement, the recovery not quite enough. You see him chase dodge up, hoping to find a nair there, but didn't quite get it. Knocks away the down sink connects. Luna, it seems like he started off strong and he's only getting stronger. The domination that he put out in the 3-1 against Boomy's Thea that we saw earlier and the 3-0 that he put out against Meg D earlier. Now he's staring at a 3-0 here against Lores. Has a massive lead, almost a full stock lead at this point. He's going to go under the stage. Now Lores, playing a very quick oh. legend, is going to be able to get over there, throw out that spear down air, and then guard the corner with the DC. Oh man, Lores went real low there. Still sweat beating, but he gets back up safely. Luna not quite in position, but that down sig still swinging on to Lores to get back onto the stage. Lores backing up towards the weapon, picks up the spear, the recovery, takes off the top, got two jump heights up. That was enough to do it. Lores definitely at a deficit here, but it's only about 100 damage. He can come back from it, but I've also said that several times during this set, and he has been unable to do it so far. I mean, it's definitely a doable percentage, but the question is, is it a doable percentage for Lores here and now? Because he needs to do it if he wants to hold on. This is the elimination bracket. That means Lores could be done for the day if he loses his next two stocks. Ah, he goes for the insig there. Lores was peeking just over the corner. Whoa. Luna expected him. Oh, oh just barely picked oh. that one up. Luna, he is going all in on these moves. He loses that stock here. Now he's actually behind. Maybe he felt himself a little bit too much and got lost in the sauce. Yeah, he was definitely getting eager there, but he just comes out the invulnerable haymaker from Luna to tie up the stock count. He's got weapon advantage. He's got the blasters. This is Lores's tournament stock. Down 0-2. He's unarmed and Dodge. taking a lot of damage against Luna's Katars. Luna already chunking away at Lores's final stock here. Goes in for the recovery. 
Lorez slapping him away, falling there. Edge guard opportunity, but Lorez gets back up safely. If there's any time for that Lorez spear to come alive and show us what we saw earlier today, earlier this weekend, it's right now. He has to pull something out. There is a weapon spawn in the field. Either player could go for it, but neither one is doing so just Whoa. yet. Luna he might low. make his way there. There's that weapon toss. Lorez has been doing a lot when he goes deep down, throws it up immediately, acting like a wall between him and his opponent. Good coverage, keeps himself safe. Goes up for the recovery, but not quite enough. The down sig, and Lorez holds on. He's going to take this to game number four. Brings himself back into this one with very solid KO efficiency as well. 515 damage was all it took to take out Luna. He made sure to get the KO right at the end there. He queued up that down signature. He didn't want to just go for a D like side air. Three, didn't two, want to go for a raw one, side air as he's landing on the ground. He wanted to make sure it was done then and there. Here we go into game number four. Same map, same picks. Luna feeling confident that he can close this one out cleanly, but Lorez, his spear is leveling up. Now, if I'm Luna at this point, I'm still feeling pretty confident. Of course, he's up 2-1 in the set, but this is also the exact same pace of what happened against Boomy. Luna took game one and two, Boomy took game three, and then game four was the final victory for Luna. And he turned up in game four. Let's see if he can do it again. Down sig after down sig, weapon toss. Needs another hit, yep. and the dare will do it, denying the wall touch from Lorez. And Luna has plenty of help to play with. Gigantic opening here. Lorez at a huge deficit. Luna still has weapon advantage. Lorez is able to grab the bow pretty quickly. There's the sidelight. He jumps in the air. He was hoping Luna was also going to jump. Maybe he could pick up a recovery, maybe even a neutral air. Sidelight and light. Doesn't catch the dodge down with that nair. Trying to find the punish on that down sig from far away. He goes for the weapon toss this time. Good dodge down. Doesn't get a turnaround though. Down sig from Lorez keeps the stock count even. He uses that down sig a lot more than Impala does. So much more than Impala does. And that's one of the things that makes this legend really unique for Lorez in a, in, in a way that it isn't for Impala on the other side. He really makes it seem like it doesn't have startup frames. Exactly. He does it, like he does it on reaction. Jumps there. Luna with a double down. Oh, this is brutal damage build up. Light. Recovery? Not enough. Sticking back with the blasters. You're seeing Ooh. those side signatures come out every now and then. It's really rare. I don't think he's found a single connection with them just yet. But it does put the fear into Lorez, who's definitely still at a deficit here. But he's done a pretty good oh. job evening things up. Lorez getting pretty deep in the red. Luna might be in the red in just a few hits. There he is. Okay, the side air. Definitely still doable for Lorez. The pogo. Another pogo. This will be huge. Luna can't touch. Oh, he went, he went for that instead of the down air. Oh, what Where was, that was the down to, air? Though? Side air from Lorez. He still maintains this slight lead over Luna. Has weapon advantage. Oh, not enough. Weapon spawn comes in. Lorez basically lands right on top of it, but moves over to the right side. Luna grabs the Katars. Dare's not going to lead to a KO. Is the attempt going to be for down a signature? Sig. Yes, it is. There's the down signature. Even bouncing off the main stage, still enough to KO. Lorez now at a 50 damage lead over Luna. Lorez still, of course, this counts as his tournament stock. He wants to force this to a game five, but Luna wants to interrupt all that momentum and take it here in game four, just like he did against Boomy's Thea. He's putting all this work into denying weapons, but Lorez gets past, picks up a spear. This is doable for either player, but the difference in the results is going to be so different, so drastic, and Luna gets in, oh gets my the gosh. dare, but can't continue. That's like the first connection Lorez has found in 20 seconds. Meanwhile, Luna has been racking it up, completely evened up now. Yet another neutral light. Ooh. Dodge through, turn around, side air. Lorez back on the stage. Nair. They're trading just a little bit. The pogo, the down oh, sig, and Luna way. with the Nair. He beats out the down sig that time. The startup was coming out. Another down sig, the end sig from Luna. Can he close out this stock? Can he close out the set? Just needs a dare on the corner. 
doesn't get the down sig. He's still being really careful. You saw him back up with that D sig, not putting as much pressure on the Ooh, corner. The Lores puts out his own D sig, but gets punished. That's a dodge. Okay, this one might be ending soon. Both players. Down oh! Oh! <laughs> Luna in game four takes it over Lores. He manages to beat his demon from San Diego. He took him out in the 2v2s, and he takes him out here in the 1v1s. Luna is going to be going into the top three to challenge Impala. That is a fourth place finish for Lores, mirroring exactly what he did at DreamHack San Diego. Of course, Last time, it was the victory in fourth place to actually knock Luna out and put him in fifth place. Now Luna has leapfrogged past him, beaten that demon exactly as you said. But still, a very impressive fourth place finish yet again. That consistency from Lores is so impressive. But it seems like 